That's right, you saw the title card, you saw the title, you know what this is. We finally got USB 4 to two times 10 gigabit ethernet adapters. No more relying on a PCIe card. No more relying on standard single port 10 GBE adapters. Now we can actually add two 10 gig ports to our portable system, to our more compact system, be it a NAS or a desktop or a laptop system there with certain caveats, something we'll talk about later on. This is allowing you, thanks to things like port trunking, SMB multi-channel, load balancing, link aggregation and more, these allow you to, on your small scale system, take advantage of massive external bandwidth there. And today we're gonna to talk about what I like about this, what I don't, what this early model represents for the rest of the network storage and uh, network peripheral industry, and ultimately whether this deserves your data. Now this is available from the sponsor of today's video, AliExpress, and it knocks around for about 100 to 120 dollars, which when you look around and find out that single port USB 4 adapters are knocking around for between 80 and 100 dollars, there's a huge amount of bandwidth afforded to you in this incredibly compact portable chassis. Let's face it, some items are just only available on AliExpress, whether it's because they're just simply too niche for other retail outlets or because they're fresh out of the East, Chances are adapters like this one in today's video are only gonna be available on AliExpress. And if you're gonna go there to get hold of it, well, take advantage of one of the many codes that I put in the description below that can give you for as little as five pounds or as high as 40 pounds off your next purchase of up to 200 pounds. On top of that, you can take advantage of the new cashback system to get up to 10% cashback on anything you purchase. Just join my team via the link in the description and doing so will not only allow you to get more points which end in more cashback, but you can still take advantage of the discount codes provided. Thanks so much for AliExpress for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to the review you. Now this whole thing is one giant heatsink all the way around. It has no active cooling system inside, something we're going to have to touch on later on. Also the more astute of you may have noticed, we are rocking out with fiber SFP 10 GBE. Now in terms of distance, SFP will always be the king of the hill. The USB Type-C there, you can get up to, I reckon, about 10 to 20 meters. Generally USB 4 doesn't really drop until you reach that point. And SFP, of course, is designed for extraordinary, or fiber is for extraordinary distances there. But keep in mind that unlike traditional copper RJ45 or 10G base T, um, uh, 10 gig ports, SFP requires either utilizing a transceiver that has to slot inside and then you attach your cables, or you're gonna have to go for what's known as DAC cables, which are cables with the adapters pre-attached. These are a lot more expensive than copper cables and only available up to a certain distance if you want the transceivers pre-attached there. So yes, it's rocking out at 10, uh, 100 to $120, but at the same time, keep in mind that until an RJ45 one comes out, the convenience of that 10G connection is debatable for some users. But why the big hoo-ha? Why am I getting my knickers in a twist about this adapter when USB-C to single port 10G has been around for so long. And I mean that, it's been around, I think since 2018, maybe even a fraction earlier when companies like Sonnet started rolling out their own adapters. Well, there's been a few different problems. Number one, until USB 4 came around, and of course Thunderbolt 4 as well, the diversification of lanes inside the Thunderbolt 3 appliances was actually quite tricky to assign. Also, heat generation and having the right controllers that could pass through uh, the data transmission through the two different architectures without significant overheat or over uh, latency became problematic. And USB 4, because it's more flexible approach to lane allocation, actually made things a lot easier. And it's actually allowed some older technology and some older 10G controllers to be bridged over quite effectively to USB 4 connectivity. Now, this device with its copper connections here, I'm uh, sorry, its fiber connections here at the top is the beginning. We've already seen from uh, QNAP that they are developing a copper based variation of this. They're also working on a 25 gig version of this that will give you USB 4, hopefully on a four times four lane, to get and two 25 gig connections in a portable form. 
but at least now with this device, what makes it really affordable is it's using a comparatively old Intel controller, the 82599, something that's present on a lot of affordable 10G dual port cards. And then it bridges to a connected M2 scale USB 4 connector inside. That's how they've managed to marry these two architectures so affordably there. But with it, I would say this device its main barrier, and it won't come as a big surprise to those of you that have used previous generation 10G Thunderbolt and USB 4 adapters, heat, because this has no active cooling and it has quite a significant amount of output. Copper connectors would generally get hotter, by the way. Um, with this, we did a few different temperature tests. So when we had the system in idle, um, and that was for a one hour idle period connected with two 10G connections. This device reached 43 to 45 degrees and never dropped. It never got cooler. It was just always really, really warm. Then we went for 20 minutes of active use and then we stopped. And that peaked at 48 to 50 degrees all the way around the device and again barely dropped below 44 to 45 at any time. This thing, I'm not going to say can cook eggs, but it can certainly warm the pan. This should be kept in a ventilated area. It certainly shouldn't be done in a closed, unventilated area, because it's not going to get too hot that it's going to catch fire, but it could definitely get hot enough to throttle the performance. And ultimately, when you're looking at something like this, performance is everything. Also, some of you in the comments may already have raised that yes, this is locked in on SFP, but you can get SFP to copper adapters that you can slide inside and then boom, you've got your copper output there, just like standard any cat cable you've got knocking around. Now, as good as that sounds, even one of these inside got outlandishly hot. In fact, we tested one individually and a second one connected inside and when we used it for just 10 minutes and then disconnected the cables, the temperature of these compared with SFP standard transceiver equipped DAC cables that I took out of a Unify system was extraordinary. These devices, after a small amount of use in the adapter, hit 67, uh, 66 to 70 degrees inside this device. They already run hot. But this thing was not able to dissipate the heat enough because of that lack of active cooling and the lack of ventilation. It is trying its best to use that ridged heat sink panel to have as much surface area as possible to capture the organic native air in your office or on the go. So temperatures, temperatures, temperatures already. I like this and I'm gonna continue using this, but keep it in a ventilated area for performance. Another caveat, before you rush out and buy what is a budget 20 gig to USB adapter, not all your USB 4 ports are equal. I mentioned it earlier on about the fluidity of bandwidth afforded to USB 4 in some systems where more modest systems that are using mobile class processors, embedded Ryzons, that sort of thing, where they have either fewer lanes or the lane allocation has to be a lot more um, creative, the result can be that there are plenty of systems I've seen that have USB 4 ports, but they are rated at 20 gigabit connectivity there. They may be on a four times one lane, there may be even a three times four lane if they're using PCIe switches in the middle. Ultimately, although PCIe Gen 4 times one will give you technically 2000 uh, megabytes per second or 20 gigabits per second, keep in mind that these connections here on that, um, two, on that uh, 20 gigabit PCIe lane, they need slightly more. There's actually slightly more outside of it. And what you'll find is, much like when you test an SSD that can hit 1,000 megabytes per second um, on a single lane, when you do put it in a real system, you end up hitting eight to 900 megabytes per second and never really get to feel the full saturation on that times one, say, Gen 3 lane. So if you're using this, on a USB 4 connection and you want to enjoy all of the 10G connectivity, you've got to have it on a USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 connection that's got four times four speed or three times four speed at least. 
Now this does not work out of the box. You're gonna need drivers. Head over to the IOCrest website and from there you can download the driver pack for this. They've got Windows, they've got Linux and they've got uh, FreeBSD drivers on there. So there's an element of flexibility. Of course, it's still gonna be very platform specific how much you can use it. So for example, when I use this on my Windows setup, I downloaded the drivers easy. I scanned it with the malware, of course. Uh, from there, I went ahead and installed it and the two 10G adapter ports were available pretty much out there. I didn't even need to restart the system. I was really impressed. And when I ran iPerf between this and a Minis Forum system that has two times SFP 10G connections, I was able to achieve 1.52 gigabytes per second over 1.65 gigabytes per second across the system. Again, when I was running them individually, uh, but hammering both ports side by side, I ended up hitting 740 and 845. Ultimately, it meant that this thing was still capping me at around 1.5 to 1.6 total gigabytes per second across the two connections. That's still great, and again, as mentioned, there may be um, a lane distribution reduction between the two systems there. And I was using a USB 4 port on one of the systems. I need to investigate the PCIe. I just wasn't able to because it was a test system that was passing through. But nonetheless, this is still greater performance than a number of those USB 4 to 10G adapters that we've discussed on the channel so far. However, just having the drivers isn't enough. For example, we went in and because we had the drivers supported by Linux systems and FreeBSD, we tried to get this up and running on TrueNAS. And by we, I mean me, two hours of my life and slowly pulling my beard out. I could not get the system to run on TrueNAS. Now, TrueNAS already has a notoriously patchy support of uh, Ethernet, uh, Thunderbolt and USB pass-through devices being supported there. Generally, you can mount them up to a point, and then after that, there becomes instability. They can have just periodic drop-off or just generally never hit anywhere near the speeds they need to. So at least right now, I wouldn't recommend this for NAS installs. This is purely a client device. I didn't have a Mac system here in order for me to push and see how this would run well on Mac, just Windows. But at least as it is and for the price, I can't really argue with what this is bringing to the table because they found a rather affordable way to achieve USB 4 to two 10 gig ports. And right now, this is it in the market. There's nothing else like this. There are things coming up in the next few months that can challenge this, but they will be more expensive because they're using more modern, integrated, and universally accepted pass-through between these architectures, but at least for now, at 100 to 120, I'm gonna keep using this. I'm gonna keep this in my test area and it's gonna make testing systems with two times 10 GPU connections that bit easier. But you better believe that this thing is gonna have a fan near it all the time I'm using it because it get hot. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Maybe you've got hold of one of these. If you have, let me know how you're finding using. I've had it in the studio for about a week and a bit, and the test I've performed so far, yes, it gets hot, but it's doing the job. If you're interested in getting hold of one of these, then go to the links in the description that will take you to AliExpress where I've listed a few different outlets that have got this currently in stock. Alongside that, there's the promo codes that I mentioned early on that allow you to get even more money off there. So again, save a bit of bunts, but only do it if you found this video helpful and only do it if you're going to go to those stores anyway. Thank you so much for watching. There should be a written review link below as well, and I'll see you next time.